Hello, welcome to chapter two on Kyber. Kyber is a key encapsulation mechanism recently standardized by NIST in FIPS 203. NIST's official name for Kyber is MLKIM, which stands for Module Lattice Based Key Encapsulation Mechanism. However, I'll continue to use the original name Kyber because it's easier to say. The Kyber Chem was designed by applying the Fujisaki Okamoto transform to an underlying public key encryption scheme, namely the Kyber PKE. Chapter 2 is comprised of four video lectures. V2A presents a simplified version of the Kyber public key encryption scheme. V2B will introduce several optimizations of the simplified scheme. The full Kyber public key encryption scheme that incorporates these optimizations is presented in V2C. Lastly, V2D presents the Kyber Chem. Recall the notation introduced in V1B. RQ is the ring of polynomials of degree at most n minus 1, with coefficients in the integers modulo q, where a multiplication of polynomials is performed modulo x to the n plus 1. S eta is a set of small polynomials in RQ, more precisely, the set of all polynomials in RQ whose coefficients when reduce mod sq are between minus eta and plus eta. rqk is a set of length k column vectors whose components are polynomials in rq. s eta k is the set of length k vectors whose components are small polynomials in s eta. In the Kyber public key encryption scheme, the plaintext space is a set of all binary strings of length n. Such a plaintext M is associated in the natural way with the polynomial in RQ with 0, 1 coefficients. For example, if n equals 5, then the plaintext 10110 is associated with the polynomial 1 plus x squared plus x cubed. The floor of an integer x is the largest integer at most equal to x and the ceiling of an integer x is the smallest integer at least equal to x. For example, the floor of 5.25 is 5. The floor of minus 5.25 is minus 6. The ceiling of 5.25 is 6. And the ceiling of minus 5.25 is minus 5. This notation denotes the closest integer to x, with ties broken upwards. The Kyber public key encryption scheme uses a notion of rounding, which I'll introduce next. We'll suppose that q is an odd prime. The idea of rounding is to consider the symmetric mod q representation of integers modulo q. So integers between minus q minus 1 over 2 and q minus 1 over 2. Then, the integers in the upper half of the circle are rounded to 0, whereas the integers in the lower half of the circle are rounded to q over 2, represented by 1. More precisely, let x be an integer modulo q, and let x primed be its symmetric mod q representation. Then, the rounding of x is 0 if x primed is between minus q over 4 and q over 4, and 1 otherwise. For example, if q is 3329, then the rounding of x is 0 if x mod sq is between minus 832 and plus 832, and 1 otherwise. The rounding function can be extended in a natural way to polynomials by applying the round function to each coefficient of the polynomial. For example, the rounding of this polynomial is x plus 
x squared. We're now ready to present the simplified version of the Kyber public key encryption scheme. The Kyber PKE is comprised of three algorithms, key generation, encryption, and decryption. For concreteness, you should consider the MLChem 768 parameters that are specified in FIPS 203. Then this standard specifies two other parameter sets. The modulus is the prime Q equals 3329, and N is 256. In fact, these values of Q and N are used in all three parameter sets in FIPS 203. We also have the parameters K equals 3, 801 equals 2, and 802 equals 2. To generate a public-private key pair, each user Alice does the following. Select uniformly at random a K times K matrix A, whose entries are in the polynomial ring RQ. A length K vector S of small polynomials, whose coefficients of size at most eta 1 and a length k vector e of small polynomials whose coefficients of size at most eta 2. Then compute the polynomial vector t equals a s plus e. Alice's encryption key, which is her public key, is a and t. Her decryption key, which is also her private key, is s. Note that computing the private key s from the public key AT is an instance of the module learning with errors problem that was defined in V1B. Recall that plain text messages are binary strings of length exactly n. To encrypt such a plain text M for Alice, Bob does the following. First, obtain an authentic copy of Alice's encryption key AT. Then, randomly select length k small polynomial vectors r and e1, r having size at most eta1 and e1 having size at most eta2. Also, select the random polynomial e2 of size at most eta2. Compute u as a transpose times r plus e1. Note that u is a length k polynomial vector. Also compute V equals T transpose times R plus E2, plus the scaled version of M, where the scaling replaces all the 1 coefficients with Q over 2 and leaves the 0 coefficients unchanged. Note that V is a polynomial. The ciphertext C is comprised of U and V. To decrypt the ciphertext C, Alice uses her decryption key S to compute the polynomial V minus S transpose U and then rounds its coefficients to obtain the plain text M. I need to justify why decryption works. That is, why decryption produces the correct plain text M. I also need to justify why the scheme is secure. Let me first do an example. Here is a toy example of the simplified Kyber public key encryption scheme. By toy, I mean that the parameters are small so that the polynomials and polynomial vectors fit on the slide, but the parameters are too small for the public key encryption scheme to be secure. The domain parameters are q equals 137, n equals 4, k equals 2, eta 1 equals 2, and eta 2 equals 2. Alice selects this 2x2 two two matrix of polynomials. Each polynomial has degree at most 3, with coefficients in the integers modulo 137. Alice selects this vector S of small polynomials, and this vector E of small polynomials. She then computes T as A times S plus E. Alice's encryption key is AT, her decryption key is S. 
to encrypt the message m equals 0111, which corresponds to the polynomial x plus x squared plus x cubed. Bob selects vectors r and e1 of small polynomials, and the small polynomial e2. He then computes u equals a transpose times r plus e1, and v equals t transpose times r plus e2 plus q over 2m. The closest integer to q over 2 is 69. The ciphertext is uv. To decrypt c, Alice uses her decryption key s to compute v minus s transpose times u, and then rounds the coefficients of the resulting polynomial, obtaining the polynomial x plus x squared plus x cubed. Thus, the plaintext is 0, 1, 1, 1. Let me next explain why the simplified Kyber public key encryption scheme is considered secure. More precisely, the simplified Kyber PKE is indistinguishable against chosen plaintext attack, assuming that the decisional MLWE problem is intractable. Chosen plaintext attack means that the adversary is given Alice's public key. Indistinguishable means that such an adversary is unable to learn anything at all about plaintext from ciphertext. To prove the claim, observe that the encryption operation can be written as the following matrix equation. Now, by the decisional MLWE assumption, T is indistinguishable from random. So this matrix is also indistinguishable from random. Again, by the decisional MLWE assumption, this vector is indistinguishable from random. Thus, from the adversary's perspective, V appears to be the sum of a random element in RQ, the element T transpose times R plus E2, and the message polynomial Q over 2 times M. Hence, the adversary can learn nothing about M from the ciphertext. Lastly, let me justify why decryption almost always works, although there is a very small probability that it doesn't. So when Alice decrypts a ciphertext C, there is a very small probability that she obtains a plaintext that is different from the one that was encrypted. We need to justify that when Alice computes the rounding of the polynomial V minus S transpose U, the resulting polynomial is equal to the plaintext M. Substituting for V, we have V minus S transpose U is equal to this expression. I then make substitutions for T and U. Expand and simplify to get this expression. Thus, the rounding of V minus S transpose U produces the plain text polynomial M if each coefficient EI of the error polynomial has mod SQ values between minus Q over 4 and Q over 4. In other words, the infinity norm of the error polynomial should be less than Q over 4. Now, the absolute value of each coefficient ei is at most kn801 squared plus 802 plus kn801802. The kn801 squared term is the bound on coefficients of e transpose times r. The 802 term is the bound on coefficients of e2. And the kn801802 term is the bound on coefficients of s transpose times e1. For the ml chem 768 parameters, the absolute value of ei is upper bounded by 6146, 
which unfortunately is not smaller than q over 4. And hence, decryption is not guaranteed to succeed. Fortunately, though, it can be shown that the infinity norm of the error polynomial is indeed less than q over 4 with probability extremely close to 1. So, in fact, decryption will almost certainly succeed. I should note that the Kyber parameters were carefully chosen to minimize the decryption error probability without compromising security.